the quarterback for the San Diego State Aztecs, Ryan Lindley, joining the show. Ryan, you're on with Chris and Ben here on Extra Sports 1360. How's your summer been going? It's been going real well. We're, uh, you know, the guys are getting in, putting in a lot of work in the weight room and, and all conditioning, and we're kind of just, uh, you know, as players, we're getting out together and trying to get those young guys, especially on offense, ready to, ready to go in the fall. Well, congratulations, uh, Ryan. Uh, Ryan Lindley uh, today named uh, one of the uh, five Mountain West Conference student-athletes. Among uh, those individuals named on the 75th Annual Maxwell Award watch list for the best player in all of college football. So uh, I guess that means somebody will be watching you this year, Ryan. I guess that's good to know, huh? Yeah, you know, it's, it's, <laughs> it's good to see uh, San Diego State finally getting on the map. So, uh, you know, hopefully we continue to build on that and then take it to the next level next year. How has the transition from Coach Hoke to Coach Long been going for the team now that you've had a few months under your belt to to adjust to coach hoke leaving for michigan how has it gone how, how's it all been it's been good uh, i think there's, there's just different i think it's different personalities you get it at the different coaching positions and we had some some guys that stayed and i think that helped out with those position groups especially at the receiver position um you know coach site being around that's great and and as quarterbacks we love that and he's really a great guy to to have on the staff, but I think it's been really good, especially through spring ball and just kind of what, what went on with that and, and how we get the young guys kind of acclimated. And it's really been a pretty smooth transition. I thought one of the things was interesting, Ryan. Ryan Lindley is with us. You and I chatted a little bit. Uh, as a matter of fact, Ben, you missed one of the more fun nights of the year. I was doing a an Aztec women's basketball game sitting courtside. Ryan Lindley is a great fan of the Aztecs basketball program. He was at the game. And I went up to him and I said, "Hey, you want to come down and sit in and do some color in the second half? You remember this, Ryan?" Yeah. And he yeah. goes, "He goes, you're kidding, aren't you?" And I go, "No, I'm not. Get down here." And so he came down and did a little color with me for the second half. And how did he do? He's got a good radio voice. He's got an excellent voice, and I'm here to tell you, you and I will be out of a job soon one of these days because he'll take it away from <laughs> us. But when it when it first happened, I think, and, and when Coach Hoke left and went to Michigan, and a, and a coach and Al Borges left to go to Michigan. I think it was a bit stunning for you. I think it was a little bit tough to kind of swallow all of that. But as you kind of thought it through, you realized, you know, I still have everything that I learned from Al Borges and from Brady Hoke, and now I'm going to add to it with some new information. Yeah. That, I mean, that's completely, that hits you on the head. I, I think in, in almost, if you think positive and you think like that, it's, uh, it's I guess, a, a blessing to have three different coaches. I mean, you, you know, to be honest with you, you learn how to, how to do it three different ways, some, some right, some wrong. And, and as a player and maybe as a future coach, you kind of figure out what works and what doesn't and what helps you uh, succeed as a player. That's kind of the big difference here, Ryan, because you've gone through the coaching changes before, as have many Aztecs over the last few years. But it's always been a case where the guy who left wasn't doing it right, and that's why they got rid of him and had to bring in someone else. This is totally different, where you really want to keep everything that the other guy had and just build on that. That makes this a very different transition than some of the other ones. Yeah, definitely. It's it's a it's a lot different just just because, like you said, and and Coach Long was on the previous staff. So really, if if you talk to a lot of us and the senior guys that that went through both changes and both transitions, it's nothing like before. It's nothing. There's not a lot of questions. There's not a lot of you know wondering what's going to go on. Who are these guys? What are they about? You know, we know that we know what Coach Long's about, and we know what the the kind of guy that he's going to bring in, what he's going to be about. So it was a, uh, it's been a smooth transition. I really don't expect us to uh, to miss a beat come fall. Ryan Lindley is with us, the Aztecs uh, starting quarterback. Uh, what's the official word now, Ryan, on camp? Well, give us a little uh, catch us all up on when you guys actually get going, get the pads on. I mean, we're not that far away from uh, the opening game against Cal Poly. Uh, and there's no, as far as we know, the college football lockout is over. So you guys are getting ready to play one way or another, right? <laughs> yeah, we're 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 going to be getting up and going here in about a month. I think it's August seventh. We open up in camp, and then wow. uh, and another month later, we'll be we'll be getting ready to play. So, I mean, it uh, it does come up on you quick, and and definitely this kind of July fourth break, we get a little half a week off from from training. You kind of see that that it's uh, it's the home stretch, and you need to get ready and kind of turn it up another notch and and how you work in the weight room and everything else. It was very fun to see Vincent Brown on uh, the draft night at the San Diego Chargers Park getting introduced as a new member of the team. How are you dealing, though, with the loss of Vincent and DeMarco? How much different is it going to be? How much confidence do you have in the guys who are going to challenge to replace those guys in the starting lineup at wide receiver? 
Yeah, it's, it's a whole lot different than, than what I've been been around. I guess my first first three years starting, and you know, I just actually I saw I've seen Darren Muji over the the Fourth of July, and I've been coming in and, and getting ready to have guys like him. You know, guys like him, Demarco, VJ, Roberto Wallace, and and guys that are, are big guys that have played. And this is going to be my first year with some guys that really don't have as much of experience, but really I'm excited about it because because they're a young group with a lot of talent, and you can kind of mold them and and uh, kind of get them to, to fit in the system and, and do things the way they need to do them. So I think it's uh, it's going to be an exciting challenge, but I'm excited. You know, we got a, we got a ton of guys with some, some real talent, and uh, Dylan Dindo, the guy who really came out in spring and, and showed that he works, and he's kind of taking a leadership role in that group. Dylan Denzo made some nice plays for you last year. And, of course, talk a little bit about your tight end uh, position. I mean, Gavin Escobar looks to me like a future pro at the tight end position, and I think you throwing to him, that could be an unstoppable combination with him down the middle of the field. I know you feel comfortable throwing to Dominic Sandifer on the outside. You've got Escobar. You've got two or three other tight ends. Bryce Quigley was uh, did some good things for you, DJ Shields. Is it going to change where you're looking downfield a little bit more this year? I mean, your first read may be down closer to the tight end position maybe more than last year? Yeah, you know, I've been I've been saying I think our strength is going to be in the box because that's what you want to say on offense. We're, we got a solid group of running backs, the line's coming back strong, and, and like you said, we got a good group of tight ends. The way Gavin played last year, and you know exactly you put, you put it well. He, he's got that pro potential, and if he continues the work, that's a that's a real possibility for him. And he's going to be a huge target for us. I'm really excited about the way Austin's coming back, and, and he had that kind of that rough hip injury last year, and. And for him to be able to come back, and he's working hard. He's almost looking like he's full speed. I mean, I haven't, I haven't seen him run this fast since about two years ago. So it's uh, it's it's real encouraging to see him come back and be able to get healthy for this uh, this last year. Yeah, I didn't mean to leave Alston and Molo out. I mean, I mean, they they really are Ben. I mean, they've got four tight ends that can all do some damage on this roster. There's no question about it. Ryan Lindley, the Aztec quarterback, is with us, and of course, uh, Ronnie Hillman. Uh, you don't really expect too much from him this second year, do you? No, you know, we, uh, we expect him to keep it coming too. I mean, he's a guy that not much needs to be said. I mean, he's a, he's an, an awesome talent. Uh, the guy's just, just got wheels. Uh, it's flat out and that's, that's all you have to say. I mean, he can, he can move and, and he can make things happen with the way he moves with the ball and his balance and, and just how shifty he is. And, and also behind him, I'm excited. I mean, Walter Casey's getting ready. He's going into his junior year. He's got a lot of experience, kind of, I guess, unheralded, I'd say. Um, and then we got Adam Wema, Dwayne Garrett, two guys coming in off a, off a red shirt and a gray shirt. So just like the tight end position where we're about four deep, I'd say we're similar at the running back spot. Ryan, I know it's against the nature of football players to look ahead, even past the next opponent, but they do sometimes. I mean, even Coach Hoke gets to Michigan, and they have a countdown until they play that school from Ohio, as they say, because it's such an important game. So... Honestly, how much are you looking forward to the game at Michigan? I mean, not only because it's Coach Hoke and you're going up against him, but playing at a, a storied, you know, place like the Big House in front of that many people—that's going to be an experience of a lifetime. Yeah, I mean, I think it's always exciting going back and and making those away trips. To be honest with you, I think a lot of guys are excited about going to West Point too. And and like you said, and and I'll start it off that we aren't looking ahead at all. I mean, we looked we looked ahead and we saw the schedule when it first came out and said, you know, okay, that's cool. We're going to Army. While this is coming down, you know, we like where we're at or we're playing in conference. But, but yeah, we're looking at Cal Poly coming coming first off, and we got to handle business there and, and just get better every week, and things should work out for us. But we definitely uh, we got a pretty sweet schedule, and I like where we're going. Ryan Lindley is with us. Ryan, again, you're all about this team, and you've been all about the Aztecs your entire career, so I know it's hard for you to answer questions about yourself. But are you hearing some things? Are you starting to get some whispers, some pro scouts, some people talking about your potential to have a chance to go in the NFL draft following this season? Is that something you can even afford to think about yet? Yeah, you know, I think it's um, you kind of got to take it, I guess, constructively. And kind of the way I've been, I've been taking some feedback is, you know, I want I want to know what my weaknesses are more than anything else because you talk about the team and. And, and me improving on those are gonna, are they gonna make this team better? So, um, that's, that's probably my biggest thing and something I've worked on since I've been here is just footwork, that kind of stuff and, and just continuing to, you know, execute and be able to be disciplined and, and kind of just be a, I guess a, a general for this offense because we're, we're gonna be running the ball, like you said, with the guys we got in the backfield and, 
And and the, the object of the game is to score points. And no matter who's back there, whether we're handing it off, passing it, it's, as long as we're winning ball games, I'm going to be happy. I know you listen to Extra Sports 1360 all the time, Ryan. So you probably heard we had a promo running around the draft, and it was Dan Patrick, our morning host, national, who was actually saying, I think next year's draft, one of the biggest surprises is going to be this kid, Ryan Lindley, out of San Diego State. I see him climbing up into the first round as one of the top quarterbacks chosen. Just to have you know guys like that mention your name, that, that must be pretty cool. Yeah, and I did. Uh, someone mentioned that earlier, and and it's awesome. And I really take it kind of as a team thing that you know what that wouldn't be happening regardless of, of the talent level I'm at or where anybody else is at comparatively. If if we weren't winning games, I mean, if we were if we were like we were my freshman year, two and ten, four and eight. I don't think that'd be, I'd be, I'd be or anyone else would be anywhere on the radar. You know, Ronnie wouldn't be getting the accolades he's getting. Everybody else wouldn't kind of be where they're at. DJ and DeMarco probably wouldn't have gotten picked as high as they did. So a lot of that stuff comes when you win ball games. And that's what we've been telling each other since we got in here. You know, you can come in and say you want to make it to the league. And if you don't win a game for four years, that's probably not going to happen. So you, you come in to improve. And individually, but at the same time, you're, you're that key component on your team, on that defense, offense, special teams to, to help win a ball game. So I'm, uh, I'm excited just to see us get that publicity and, uh, just continue to grow in the national spotlight. I don't think there's any question that, uh, San Diego State red and black fans, I mean, 2010, 2011 has been one of the greatest combinations of years, sports years that we've ever had on Montezuma Mesa. And I think, the basketball team, Ryan. I, I I know you didn't mind sharing a lot of the spotlight with those guys going 34 and three and having a Sweet 16 run, but let's not forget, man. It was a memorable football season, one we haven't seen in a long, long time. Nine and four, finished off with just a phenomenal performance in the uh, Poinsettia Bowl against Navy. So uh, we're excited. The fans are excited. It's fun for me to get stopped on the street and having people asking me about you guys all the time now. That didn't used to happen before, so uh, I know everyone's excited. We wish you nothing but the best and look forward to camp starting next month. Yeah, thank you very much.